lane one, we have Lassi Koronen um, from Sweden. His handicap is that he started very late in his uh, life. He'd been rowing in a church boat and uh, doing a little bit of recreational rowing. But then we move to the Olympic champion, Olaf Tufter from Norway, another Scandinavian. And he's in lane two there. In lane three, one of the pole positions, winner of a semi-final, Alan Campbell from Great Britain. Fifth last year and after winning some of the, the World Cups. And there is the champion of 2005, the champion of 2006. What will he do today? Mahe Drysdale of New Zealand. And uh, the man we were talking about a minute ago, you see them there, Marcel Hacker, having a little yawn. It is not because he's bored or tired, it is actually well, it a very, well, it might be in his game, but in, in <laughs> normal cases, you often see athletes on the start having a little yawn, and it's a function of their nervous system in those moments before a huge burst of adrenaline as this race starts. And in lane six, Andre Siniak, double sculler turned single sculler from the Czech Republic. And uh, he has had a wonderful season in the World Cups. A little bit off colour here, but I wouldn't believe that he hasn't got it in the bag to uh, come up. Any one of these people can win this race. Koronen, the least experienced and the least pedigree, but he's coming up all the time and getting faster each year. It's under orders here now. Nation's hopes resting on one man of the moment, Marcel Hacker. And they're off the fast start from Siniak. Siniak has got a lot of speed, and I do really think that he's been masking it. A lot of people watching the, over this week have been saying that they expect big things from Siniak in this final. Nearest to us, as you can see, Hacker powering away Drysdale and Campbell, who trained together at Tideway Scholars School in London, in the middle of a picture. That's very interesting. Uh, we took Hacker. He, I thought he got a very slow first stroke. He seemed to me, I mean, Siniak, as you say, just screamed out at the start. And I thought Hacker was quite slow off the start. Um, but he then went up to 47 and uh, has used, you, you said, muscle. He really is, he is power away. That was the word you used. And he is a power sculler. He sculls very nicely, but he has an awful lot of physique to put to it. And it's really a question of how well his head is going. On the other hand, the new leader is Alan Campbell of Great Britain over there in lane three. And he looked a little bit dropped off the first 10 strokes, didn't he? And he's come back on. I, I think that's tactical, really. Do you? I, I think Campbell, uh, particularly with Drysdale, uh, in Campbell's mind, it's him and Drysdale. He knows that if he gets ahead of Mahe, then he's got a very good chance of picking up that Olympic, sorry, that world gold medal. Mahe definitely the man to beat, and as you saw from the previous picture, he's starting to come back up on Hacker, stroking 37 strokes a minute. But Drysdale, the long, long stroke, using all the benefits of his six foot six, I think six foot seven frame. Very tall man, very long levers. And you see there, just sweeping the boat on. Campbell, Imlay next to him, trains with him, as I've already said. And I think actually kind of looks up to him a lot. He knows that if he gets ahead of Drysdale, he's got a really good chance. But it's Campbell through the line, followed by Tufta, Norway, in over there on the far side. Drysdale in the middle of your picture in the black boat at the moment in bronze medal position. Now, what is Tufta up to? Because Tufta is really pushing there. He's now, I think, put himself ahead of Campbell. So it's those three. It's Tufta, Campbell and Drysdale in the leading three positions and Hacker already beginning to drop back. Now, Tufta, we haven't seen perform properly this season at all. He's been out of it for the um, all the World Cups, coming in fourth, fifth, trailing in the early part of the race. This is an entirely new Tufta we're seeing. This is the Olympic Tufta we're seeing. He seems to be somebody who hasn't got many partners that he can skull with in Norway. He was in a double skull for a long time in the past. He's decided to do the single, and uh, so he doesn't have much fun in between Olympics, but he comes on Starting form. Starting to push there, and he's just uh, pushed down now to a canvas. Definitely had a move through 750 meters, but it's Drysdale still. Very calm, very relaxed, long, flowing stroke. And I really think that his base speed is probably going to have enough to take him through Tufta. It's going to be a huge, monumental effort if Tufta's going to come back. Up there in the top left of your screen, you see uh, it's 850 metres gone. And that's just a GPS showing that Norway in the lead. Sweden minus 18 is 18 metres back. Then GB, 8 metres back. New Zealand, 3 metres back. So it's very, very close, very tight up this top end. But Hacker, way off the pace now. The crowd in this stand, which is 10,000 uh, seated people in the stand, and it's full, uh, are a little bit quiet at the moment because we see Hacker a little bit off the pace. There's the empty lane, and Hacker now in sixth place at the moment, 
uh, just behind Sweden in uh, fifth. But here we go, through the 1,000 metres, and here, as we've already said, here's where the race really starts. Tufta has put in a big effort around 750 to 1,000 to get that little slim bit of a lead. Drysdale seems to be under control, seems to be just long, fluid strokes. But if Tufta can really just get out in front, he might be able to do something. Siniak on this near side, yet to really show. Let's see if he can do something in this last 800 metres. And uh, we see there the local man, the man upon so much expectation is heaped on his shoulders. And the umpire's launch is almost in touch with him. He's uh, not managing this final at all well. And believe it or not, Mahe Drysdale, as so often, has seen off Tufta's challenge. So let Tufta get in front. And uh, now it's going to be a real battle between those two. But Mahe has decided that this is the time in the race, entering the last... Uh, Seven, well, 750 metres to go, Drysdale wants the lead, and he's half a length up on he's really moved on now. and Campbell is in third place, and uh, those three at 37 for Norway, he's a, he's a high-rating sculler, is Tufta, when he's on form, so that isn't a surprise, and uh, Campbell at 35, and New Zealand at 36 strokes to the minute. Um, that's about normal for them in a, in a slight tail breeze. They'll well, uh, be lower than that in the head. Sure, but I think actually that was, uh, we just saw Drysdale's rate just creep up there. He definitely put in a big push. He decided now's the time to go as they come up to 500 metres. Drysdale's opened up about a three-quarter length lead and he has looked untouchable in this regatta. Now coming up 36 strokes a minute through 1500 and he's over a length to the good. Siniek on this near side looks like he's going to be challenging Tufta for that silver medal. But it's all New Zealand and it's all black out in the front of the lead. And Karolin has dropped off the back now for Sweden, and it's, it's Germany at Marcel Hacker is at last beginning to move, but he's far too far out. Even in a single skull, he hasn't got the change of pace to get back in touch, and certainly Drysdale's not the man to let him get back in touch. Oh, I, don't, I don't think Drysdale's going to be too bothered about Hacker. He looks absolutely imperious at the top of this field. And this is just a fantastically fluent skull from Mahi Drysdale. Wasn't bothered to let other crews, yeah, uh, uh, other scholars take a little bit of a lead on him. He just thought, I'm going to settle down to my rhythm, my length, and it's really paid dividends. Drysdale now stretching out to a fantastic lead as they come through 250 metres to the line. He's got a length and a half. Drysdale absolutely long and strong at the front of his field. But if the real race is on, the second and, and third position for that silver and bronze medals, the moment it's Tufta and Siniak on this near side, but Campbell, a very, very fast scholar, very fast finisher, and he's going to be coming up in rate. We usually see Campbell hitting 42, and we've just seen him pop a rate now. Has 42 he, for Siniak. 42 for Siniak on this near, near side, Campbell in the middle of the picture. Is he going to have enough? It's still Tufta in the silver medal position, and Siniak on the near side. Siniak just got it. 43 yeah. now, Campbell. Campbell's gone to 43, but it isn't enough, and Siniak has come through to take a silver medal position, I think, ahead of Tufta. Yes, it is. So, Drysdale now being hauled in, but he will get there first, in safety. Siniak closing incredibly fast and might even get level with him, and no, it good. will be Tufta in bronze medal behind those two. So, Drysdale arms aloft through the line is the winner. Siniak is in second place with a silver medal. Olaf Tufta, the Olympic champion in bronze medal, and Alan Campbell in fourth, uh, even in spite of his 43 strokes per minute up that last bit. But there is the supreme champion of this event, three gold medals in a row. He now is uh, heading, he will think about this and glory in this for a matter of hours before he begins to bring his concentration back and look forward to Beijing, because it's the Olympic gold, the man... This is the man who holds the Olympic gold, and that's what Drysdale wants more than anything else.